Well, here we are again. Weekly wrap three, number three, third show. Yeah. I'm Adam. I'm Jake. And we're going to be covering quite a few important topics today. So Jake's going to be going over the importance of form while exercising, training when you don't feel like it, and certain strategies behind that, which yeah. will be really good to hear. I'll be going on off season, having a new meaning, because a lot of people think off season, out of shape, bulking type approach. So I'll be looking forward to covering that. And also metabolic adaptation. This is a huge subject Jake and I are consistently speaking about, about people trying to uh, diet while they're dieting on very little or no food at all and lots of exercise. So we've got some pretty important topics to cover today. We've got a great little mate here as yeah, well. Sorry, didn't introduce our little minion friend. Mr. Minion. He's, yeah. a, he's a local resident here at HQ. So yeah, Third show, it's been, uh, we've had some great response so far and, and some good feedback because obviously we want to keep it pretty real and want you guys to just sort of see what happens on a weekly basis for us. And first things first, uh, Jake and I sort of get to give you guys an insight as far as what's been happening in the last seven days with food and training. So yep. take it away, Jake. What's... Yeah, cool. So yeah, last week I think we spoke, I was sick, coming out of being sick. See you later, Minion. And um, yeah, so this last week, since I last spoke to you, has been heaps better. Um, weights haven't been up there, but food's been perfect. And training hard, but I just haven't been able to get, especially the compounds, my weight to where it was. Training hard, and I've just had to make up with it with some ice, extra isolation stuff at the end. So yeah, uh, yeah what cool. about yourself? Yeah, and that's been good. I hit 500 grams of carbs last week, which is great. And guys, this, is, this has been a a very slow uh, and patient process uh, for, for an end goal starting uh, prep in April. But yeah, 500 grams of carbs, did my check-in this morning. When did you do yours? Uh, yeah, I did my, I'm doing mine tomorrow. He's got his tomorrow. Yeah. So I checked in, I actually lost a few hundred grams, but there are a few variables that can come into place with that. I did climb a mountain for the first time. I paid for that for a little bit, but it was, it was on my day off. So I did counteract things as far as that's concerned. Training, um, this is interesting. There's just a couple of little niggles that, ongoing niggles that have crept in and, and this is something that Jake and I constantly uh, are speaking to with, with clients that we're mentoring as well is that when you're pushing the limits of your physical capabilities, there's always that uh, possibility, no matter what, even with good form, yeah. Um, you can just, there's, there's, there's just that little barrier where it's sometimes you, you can get prone to certain yeah. things. You know, you got power lifters, you got bodybuilders, the best in their game, um, you know, always coming across the potential of something like that happening. So, you know, I'm working around it as best I can. Um, training's been great, I'm feeling good. Uh, body's changing, uh, I'm trying to keep up with this bloody big rig over here, but, um, you know, yeah, pretty happy with the last seven days. So, bring on the next seven. Yeah, cool. So would you say you, when we train hard, we're at risk, but when we use good form, we reduce that risk? Absolutely. Like, I mean, where do you start uh, watching some uh, form of certain people when fatigue kicks in? Um, I'm a huge believer in going to failure with perfect form and um, teaching the, the foundational basics of uh, completing an exercise with good form from A to B. And um, this I, ca I cannot stress highly enough. Um, and not only that is I think people that I've been dealing with for years, teaching them good fundamental basics of proper form, um, they've been injury free the whole time. Yeah. Maybe again, I should be clear, like this is taking things next level as far as it. And I'm, yeah, I'm not normally battling niggle, little niggles, but yeah, a few little things have crept up on me and yeah. probably not uh, taking my own advice as far as having a rest day here and there. Yeah. So um, yeah. that's definitely something I've learned from in the past. Yeah, cool. So yeah, I remember training, first training with you, I dropped my weights back through pretty much every exercise because we, we worked on form yep. pretty much. So if you can get your form down pat first and then start to increase your weight from there and not have to go backwards like I did, which is a real sort of mental battle and yeah. too once you're over like so much weight and then you have to pull it back to sort of um, make your form a lot better. Um, yeah, it's definitely better off just on it from the, the starting point. Yeah, I, I, got, a, I got a little uh, quote that um, it actually popped up and, and this was my old footy coach and uh, it, it always stuck with me and I always tell 
people who I'm uh, educating and the, the form side of things or anything that, are, that it applies to. But practice doesn't make perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. So that's, that's something that always stuck with me too. You, yeah. can, you can keep practicing you know, exercises in the gym, but if you're doing it wrong, you're just ingraining uh, a movement pattern that's gonna end up you know, leading at risk of injury. Whereas yeah. where, you know, where Jake and I believe solely in you know, starting from, from scratch and making sure that you do, do the, the, the compound or the basic movements right from day dot, you, you, injury, injuries are, are very hard to come by then. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, you see a lot of people just trying to lift sort of heavy and they're doing sort of partial reps. So is there a big difference between the two? Good form between just heavy weights Partial reps or oh, where, where is do we there start? a time we, for them partial we call reps them, to come in? We call them partial peats as well. Yeah, uh, you see them called partial peats. <laughs> load, loading, <laughs> up on the, loading up on the squat rack. Like Jake and I, we obviously have a bit of a debrief before our weekly wrap, so we're not going in cold turkey, which we definitely um, nearly did the first time. But uh, where do we start? I mean, this is a debate that we can go on with for a long time. I mean, for the experienced lifter, and once form and foundation techniques have been uh, well uh, executed and ingrained in that person where basically subconsciously they can be thinking about many other different things and you know they've taught their body yep. those movements um, correctly over a long period of time partial movements x reps drop sets the, all these types of different techniques and and methods can be definitely put in place but yep. um, my personal recommendation is, you know, full range of, uh, of uh, motion with the majority of, uh, especially all your compound movements, especially for the very beginners, is so important for muscular development and balance. Um, and not only that, you know, technique is, is absolutely essential and you don't sort of teach people, unless it's injury and rehab, um, partial type movements or not carrying out the full range of motion. And again, you know, we were just discussing this before, it's come to the stage where our abilities to look at someone walk or just look at photos of them and you know exactly how they train yep. due to their um, development. Um, there's nothing more respectable than a balanced physique. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. So you'd be well into your off season by now. So how's that going? <sighs> yeah, peak, like f fully in the off season now. Um, this is where, off, the term off season, obviously I used to think of dirty bulking donuts and yeah. um, ice cream and Krispy Kremes and chocolates and pizza and you know, to get the weight up and then cut it all down. But uh, the science behind things is over the years has certainly changed. And uh, I'm as far into off season than I ever have been before as far as just setting myself up perfectly and um, still, you know, see in my midsection and, and very happy with my shape, but uh, this has just been strategically calculated to, uh, over time, with, with food and not binging on the weekends and just just being very conscious about certain decisions and social events and things that I do because I, I know what goes in here has the biggest uh, effect on performance in the gym floor and aesthetically as well. So. Uh, off season definitely doesn't mean that you let your physique yep. go whatsoever. Off season, I think, is an opportunity to get yourself in calorie surplus or uh, in you know calories over and above what your body uh, yep. burns to survive to um, grow and get stronger and adapt and basically work on those weaker uh, body parts that you want to bring up, etc. So this whole experience of of an off season has just blown my mind, not only uh, aesthetics uh, wise, but performance on the gym floor, how hard we continually train. And not only that is that you can maintain a very respectable physique over this period of time and um, you know not have to worry about excessive body fat gain because it, I tell you what, on a mental level, regardless of what anyone says, when someone's doing a dirty bulk, um, for me personally, and I know, I know for Jakey Boy because he's, uh, yeah. he's out, outdoors a lot as well, um, it would play havoc on my mind um, knowing that I've got to somewhat get out of condition to, um, to yeah. get the gains. Um, look, everyone has their, is entitled to a different way of doing things or a different opinion, but my mentality as far as an off-season physique is um, 
is being as close to peak as possible while being able to you know, be in a, in a calorie surplus and get some quality gains. So. And you're still not missing out on all the good foods and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, I just wanted to know, you can put on lean muscle without getting fat, pretty much. Oh, I, a, absolutely. I mean, you, you're never going to maintain absolute, you know, let's say for someone who's competing or anything like that, yeah. you're not going to uh, have veins and a rippling six pack. I mean, genetically, some people very rarely are. Um, but, you know, as far as, uh, being able to put on lean muscle and not have to compromise as far as putting on excess uh, fat, no, no, yep. not at all. Yeah, I think the more, the more muscle you grow and maintain, the more calories your body burns yep. doing nothing. So it's, it actually, I, I, I found, made, makes life a little bit easier as yep. well. So. Just watching you as well, and through my experience, you haven't put on body fat really, and your food's gone ridiculous. Yeah, your my, strength's gone up. Yeah, uh, food intake, I think, is another. Since last, yeah, it's probably doubled. I was uh, two and a half times more than what it was when I was dieting, yeah. Um, and yeah, like it's been slow increments every week. The body doesn't notice those those uh, continual adjustments. But when you times that by ten weeks, it's quite. Yeah. It's like it's like putting one and a quarter kilos aside on your bench press, and after ten weeks, you know, there's over yeah. ten kilos increase. It, you know, progression is it, slow progression or any progression is still progression. Yeah. And um, I think patience has been a huge. Uh, thing for me because everyone wants it yesterday, and yep. I realise that you know this is this is going to be my life's work uh, ahead, and um, you know it's just it's a lifelike artistry, yep. and uh, always going back to the drawing board. And after you know this year as well, I no doubt will be doing my homework, and hopefully yep. me and Jakey Boy will will be up there together in in a couple of years as well. So yeah, um, yeah. So when you train as well, are there days that you just don't feel like doing it? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, I mean, hey, the, and everyone here can relate to that when you wake up and you just, uh, I mean, how many times, like, it, it seems because of the level of intensity of training. I mean, you're not going to train to 110% every single time you get in there. There's going to be those flattish days. Um, but this is my opinion, and from my experience, those days I wake up and feel like I'm, I'm not really feeling it. Uh, some ninety-five uh, percent uh, of the time, some of the best training sessions I ever have. Yeah, it's yeah. and I, in the back of my mind, or mentally, I always tell myself that as far as you know, getting up and getting started, getting the blood flow, starting to train. Yeah. I think as soon as I sort of get in the gym and, and oh, you know, getting there and getting up is the hardest, but uh, just keeping that routine and knowing that it's just you know, don't let this. Um, take over as far as things and don't you know if you're already in that negative mind frame before you even walk in the gym you, you've already lost and there's no way you're going to make progression so yeah. and I know you you know especially dealing with you through comp etc as well and even now you know there's there's those days come quite often now especially when you're pushing the boundaries and um, yeah I just I find those days those, those flat days uh, are some of the days that I, I end up pulling out some of the, the best sessions of my Yeah, so I think the hardest part is sort of showing up most of the time. Once you show up and you start getting into it, you actually start to come good, feel good, and yeah. then you end up having a good session, and your day sort of has a ripple effect from that early morning oh. session. If you except miss that day, yeah, except it's legs. If, if it's legs, <laughs> you're staring at the ceiling for about three, three hours after it, it's yeah. bloody. Um, which again we'll touch training buddies if you've got someone that you know who either is thinking of joining or is on the same path as you try and connect up with them because honestly it will be the best thing you'd never want to let your training buddy down when when they're feeling good and you're not it's just it's a it, it's a synergy type uh, scenario and you're both there as a team yeah. um, that 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 for me got me out of some huge holes both physically and mentally having a training buddy there and um, I could not advise uh, highly enough so yep yeah well, definitely especially when you the days where you're both feeling like crap too it works well then as well you're <laughs> like you feel like crap yeah man oh, so do I yeah. let's get into it and just yep. get it done so yeah uh, uh -huh. it definitely works really well so um, what about um, your metabolic advice for those that are getting this into it Oh, where this, this like these are things you'll hear us talking about on a consistent basis because it's things that we come across on a 
on a, on a regular basis dealing with the, the everyday person, whether they're an experienced lifter or they're just starting out. Now, how many times do you hear or you even say yourself that the first time I dieted it all worked well and you know things were go and I dropped all this weight, the second time I did it, oh, it was it was a little bit harder. The third time not much weight shifted, fourth time I dropped all my calories, I did all this exercise and nothing moved. How many times have you heard that as well? Yeah, just and I've done it before. Yeah. <laughs> I've done I've, we've been through it all as far as that's that's concerned. Your body, you've got to understand is built to adapt and survive over tens of thousands of years. We're the cavemen and women. You know, there's times of feast, there was times of famine. And if you're already providing it or, or, or telling it an environment where food is not plentiful, food is scarce, it's going to do everything in its power to keep you alive. Our bodies, that's its job, Put hands down. And if there's all this energy expenditure going through too, so calories out, calories in, let's just say that theory was worked every single time uh, yeah unfortunately it's not that simple as just calories in calories out if you're doing all this exercise continuously and you're eating very little and you want to cut weight and the weight's not moving so you do more exercise and you eat less um, and not, nothing still budges basically your body is so smart. It is so smart. It learns to burn less calories while exercising. It learns to burn less calories through digestion and basically just the general day-to-day -day functioning of your body. It basically learns to go from a V8 supercar, everyone's heard this little saying that I do, down to a six cylinder, down to a four cylinder, down to a backup generator. All right, so the thing too is when you are at your metabolic capacity or you are just cranking through and you are at your metabolic capacity, you're like that supercharged V8 supercar, churning through petrol. It's easy to keep body fat off. It's easy to, you know, you're sleeping better, you're training harder, everything's just working. You're on a full tank of fuel and a sub tank every time you train. But you've got to understand through dieting and, and long periods of dieting, me metabolically you start to slow down. And the thing too is that when someone is at that stage and nothing is working, you've got two options. One, more training, less food, and put your health at risk and be prepared for metabolic shutdown, hormonal issues, things hitting the fan tenfold. Or two, is start repairing your metabolism and what they, it's, it can be a sort of thing called reverse dieting where we slowly bring calories back up to where what would normally happen in a body is that not uh, measurements would either even drop or weight can sometimes stay the same, if not drop, bringing food back up slowly. Slow increments every week we start introducing food back up. I won't go into it, but what we need to then do is make sure that this person's calories are sufficient where we've then got a good buffer to start dropping calories again. The metabolism is repairing over time. Again, this doesn't happen like that, unfortunately. And over time, we can repair their metabolism, get their body running like a V8 supercar once again, and then be prepared or take a strategic move to then drop calories or increase exercise. Look, I mean, where do we, where do we start? It's such a big topic as far as that's concerned, but, um, metabolic adaptation your body's survival mechanism comes into play when you've been dieting for such a long period of time i am constantly banging my head against a brick wall trying to ingrain it with people that dropping calories and more exercise is not the answer in this scenario and you need to put your health at a priority as far as this is concerned the worst thing you could do when you're in that period is basically start dropping calories again or continue to be in a long diet period as far as it. And the other thing too guys, like I mentioned before, is that diet history plays a very big role in your body's ability to shift weight and repairing your metabolism. So if you've been crash dieting and binging on the weekends and trying fad diets and doing challenges and all these sorts of things consistently, this can also have a big impact on your ability to um, you know, get the ball rolling or get your metabolism uh, cranking at full capacity once again. So it's it's a huge subject now because obviously the science behind it, our understanding of, of this scenario 
and how important it is for these people that are stuck in this situation where they're doing all this training, all this cardio, all these circuit classes, these challenges, eating very little and finding that progress is somewhat, it's just stalled. It's like a handbrake's gone on, but they've got their foot on the accelerator. So some of you, the alarm bell might be ringing or the light bulb moment. Um, this is something that we deal with on a consistent basis. Um, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. It's just knowing what it is and knowing that there are strategies that can be put in place to be able to fix this, this problem. Because one, you've, got, you've, got, you've only got one body, you've got to look after it. And you know, it's, it's not an overnight fix, but the amount of people I've been able to and Jake's been able to repair in this scenario, uh, it's great and it's a, it's a fantastic educational process along the way because you can eat healthy or clean eating, but you can still absolutely stuff that up if you don't know uh, your numbers as well. So as you can probably imagine, I'm pretty passionate about this topic because it's about 90% of people we deal with in, uh, that are coming to us in this scenario. Uh, we've done a lot of research behind it and um, I'm definitely looking forward to um, you know, releasing a lot more in educational insight as far as metabolic adaptation with Jake and, and what we plan to do for people in this scenario. Um, but all things aside, Australia Day. Yep. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> Prep Australia Day. Prepping for Australia Day. Now for those, oh, I did that video on purpose about two ways not to get fat yep. on Australia Day. Um, yeah, Jake and I had a bit of a chuckle as far as beers and certain things that we'd like to introduce uh, through that time. We're realists. There's always going to be events. There's always going to be things coming up. So I'd love to hear what Jake's strategy is for this. Yeah. His food's pretty hot. Yeah, so. my food's pretty hot at the moment, but um, actually had to think about it. I'm going to go with method two. Method two. Yeah, method banking two. So that'll mean I have to start tomorrow and I'll bank 20% of my calories and then I'll also bank Saturday, 20% ready for Friday. So 40% goes in on Friday. So you got your total calories plus plus another 40%. Plus the 40%. So yeah, plenty of, should plenty be going of room to move. Yeah, a few beers. And then my food will be similar. Uh, just a few extra beers pretty much. Yep. So yeah, what about yourself? What method are you going on? Um, I did say to myself method one because my food is, is pretty high. I think like food wise I don't really plan to overindulge because I'm all or nothing so if I do go down that route I will eat the house down and everyone else's food and leftovers and whatever probably the neighbours have got as well <laughs> so yeah you know I, I know how my body responds that way uh, or my, my mentality so it, it, it has its advantages but it also has its disadvantages I just allocated a certain amount of beers guys I did say 12 but it won't, it won't be 12 <laughs> look 6 to 8 that, that, that's enough for me, but it might be more like a Sahis or something like yeah. that. Um, there's some, some cool stuff that we'll bring forward as well about uh, calculating alcohol yeah. calories um, or, or different types of alcohols uh, to, to bring into play, which was in the, um, in the last YouTube video that we did.